When a Muslim woman chooses to put on the scarf, it is an act of faith. I do this because God wants it. And he created me and I want to obey his rules. But in Turkey, once the fabric is tied, pinned and adjusted, the headscarf becomes a symbol of something dangerous. The individual face framed by the scarf transformed into the face of Islamic fundamentalism. Türkiye'de laik rejimi kaldırmak isteyen güçler var. Yani Türkiye'yi İran'a döndürmek isteyen, koyu dine bağlı bir rejime döndürmek isteyen güçler var. Bunun önlenmesini silahlı kuvvetler istemesin mi? Women who wear the scarf are banned from universities and jobs in the public service like teaching and nursing. They can't take a sewing course or learn how to drive a car. Government says you are trying to collapse our country. Uh, can a scarf col uh, collapse a country? Is our country such a teeny country? I don't believe it. Turkey is adjusting to an awkward reality, the sharpening of lines between the West and Islam. Religious rights are being curtailed, and ordinary people who want simply to practice their faith are regarded as the enemy within. Ben e, irticanın tarifi yapılma ülkemde irticanın tarifi yapılmadığı için ben irticacı mıyım? İrtica nedir bilemiyorum. Namaz kılmak, oruç tutmak, zekat vermek yani İslam'ın şartını yerine getirmek irticaysa, onu bilemi irticaysa The past shimmers into the present in Turkey. Islam and Christianity, two great religious tides met here at the legendary Golden Horn 1200 years ago. The Roman Empire fading, replaced by an empire of soaring minarets. Today, Turkey is an Islamic nation facing west, and as the world takes sides and signs up for war, Turkey's careful model of secular Islam separating religion and the state is coming under intense pressure. The problem in Turkey is that the national unity, the concept of national, national unity today is still perceived more or less in the same way as it was in, say, Europe in the 1920s or 30s. That is, as something that has to be very solid and cannot tolerate, cannot accept any deviance, any, uh, uh, any uh, difference of, of uh, some importance. <laughs> Najia Altay fusses over her eldest son in the way of all mothers readying a child to leave home. Mujahid is leaving for university. There's elation, but also disappointment. <laughs> Nineteen-year-old Mujahid dreams of becoming a doctor. He got high grades qualifying him to become a doctor. But he's been disqualified because his school curriculum, identical in every other way, included the study of religion. And to discourage religious schools, the government scales down their students' exam results by an average 10%. This bright young student will study engineering instead. For a proud parent, the injustice burns. Izdırap duyuyorum. Çok ızdırap duyuyorum. Çünkü benim oğlum çok iyi şartlar altında yetişmiş, çok iyi şartlar altında yetiştirmişim. Ben emekliyim, çalışarak. 30 sene ben fiilen bu devlete vergi vermişim. 30 sene çalışarak evlatlarımı büyütmüşüm, en iyi şartlar altında yetişmişim, yetiştirmişim ve çocuklarım da çok başarılı olmasına rağmen sadece Kur'an öğrendiği için, inancını yaşamaya çalıştığı için diskalifiye, pasifize edilmiş ve dışlanmıştır. Under Turkey's secular model, the army is granted great power. 
charged with defending both the nation's security and its secular system, religion seen as threatening as an invading army. The most recent clampdown on Islam four years ago saw the removal of Turkey's first Islamic prime minister. The February 28th process, as it's known, was engineered by General Cevik Bia. There was an intention that they were going to replace the Turkish uh, rep the Republic regime with a kind of is Islamic regime, something like this. It was clear. The implications of the Islamic purge have been radical for Turkish citizens like Fatima Nur. A secondary school teacher for a dozen years, she taught her students wearing her headscarf. Her career ended abruptly one morning after being summoned to the principal's office. The student called me. He said, uh, the head of the school was calling me. I went there uh, and he said uh, he was sorry but uh, it's the end of my uh, teaching. Scarves are now forbidden, even at religious schools. Without work and an income, Fatima has been forced to return to live with her parents in their village. Shopping in Istanbul, a rare treat. It's a bitter blow to a woman for whom teaching is a vocation. The simple thing, Fatima, would be to just take off your scarf. First of all, I want to uh, obey the rules of my religion. But I want to uh, live in a modern uh, life too. It's my right, I think. Do you think the state is actually scared of Muslims? In Turkey, there are some people who are afraid of uh, Muslims. I don't know why. They think that the Muslim people are fundamentalists. But uh, in my opinion, in Turkey, if there are, there are a few, not a few, few uh, fundamentalists. But I haven't met any yet all over my life. That's it. Çek. Hızlı çek. Ee, ve Müslümanların Müslümanların e, hep gerici gözüyle görüldüğü. Artık yani Müslümanlar hep e, sanki gericiymiş gibi irticacı bir damgası var. Mehmet Kamerçu family has also been caught in the clampdown. His scarf-wearing sisters forced to suspend their university studies. It's a paradox, but Turkey's determination to suppress Islam is pushing young women back into the home, something associated more with radical Islam than the West. <laughs> The Komerçu family is typical of Istanbul's booming population, swollen in the past decade by the arrival of tens of thousands of families from the south and east. Crafts learned at the knee of village masters continue in the crowded communities and labyrinth of streets. The values of these rural immigrants are conservative, their religious traditions strongly held. The authorities' harsh insistence on secularism can feel here like a betrayal, a yielding to the West. Ama Batu ülkesi olmak sanayide Batıya benzeyelim, üretimde Batıya benzeyelim, ekonomide Batıya benzeyelim biz. Yani başka türlü Batıya ve kişisel olarak benzememizin Bizim hepimizin bir örf adeti var. Religion does have a place in Turkey, and it is confined to the mosques. This is Islam as decoration, part tourist attraction, part architectural wonder. 
but a religion swept into the corners of public life. Those who challenge this policy, even those who simply wish to debate it, can expect to feel the full weight of the state. This man, for instance, writer and columnist Femi Koru, is charged with breaching Turkey's freedom of expression laws and faces a six-year jail term. I have a wife and five children. Femi will be tried by a military judge before a state security court, alongside drug smugglers and perceived enemies of the state. Even a former judge of this court, Umit Kadas, believes a fair trial is unlikely. Mutlaka acı çekiyor çünkü savunma hakkından yoksun kalıyor. Birçok haklarını yargılama yöntemi nedeniyle bu nedenle devlet güvenlik mahkemelerinin kaldırılması gerektiği kanısındayım. Femi's crime sprang from the earthquake in 1998, which claimed up to 100,000 lives. An Islamic newspaper editor interpreted the devastation as a response by God to the 97 coup, retribution for those opposed to Islamic values. It was a view the authorities did not wish aired. I was only defending his right to say this, because everybody is entitled to his or her own ideas, and whether you believe in God or not, whether you are an atheist or not, uh, you can say what you think very openly. There are many reasons for Turkey's extreme sensitivity to any hint of religious extremism, but the simplest is geography. While its western border is the tranquil Aegean, to the south and east are the fundamentalist forces of the Middle East. Do you regard Muslim fundamentalism as the greatest threat to Turkey today? görmeye de devam ediyorum. Çünkü bunlarla e, çevrilmiş Türkiye, demin saydığım gibi İran, Irak, Suriye gibi fundamentalist ülkelerle çevrilmiş. Ve onlar bizi kendilerine benzetmek istiyorlar. Çünkü İslam ülkesi, 52 tane İslam e, devleti arasında bir tek Türkiye Former president and four-star general Kenan Evren ruled Turkey for eight years in the 1980s. Now 85, he remains a sharp observer and a dedicated secularist. E, fundamentalist kişilerle mücadele, onların onların e, uyguladığı e, uyguladığı sistem de bu. Do you believe that Turkey needs to be tougher than ever? with its Muslims, with its fundamentalists. Ha, Türkiye acaba böyle bir sehre geçen içinde mi? Şimdi değil ama eğer yumuşak bırakır, gevşek bırakırsak bir zaman gelir bu Ladin gibi insanlar da bizde de çıkabilir. The curious thing about the way Turkey treats its Muslims is that this is not some insidious outside force, it is the country's official religion. When Turks are born, that's what's written automatically on their identity documents. Religion, Islam. Which is why it's a 99% Muslim country. But how far do you go? The question that's always hovering here, making for a lot of anxiety and confusion is, how Islamic is too Islamic? Like the deliberate markings of the master calligrapher's pen, to be a good Muslim in Turkey requires a fine sense of proportion. A slip one way or another, and the balance is disrupted, the harmony ruptured, a line almost invisible to the untrained eye has been crossed. From Bosphorus University, historian Professor Edim Eldam analyzes the shifts. How does a normal, everyday working Turk know when they're on the right or the wrong side of the religious line? 
Well, through practice, and this practice is dictated more or less by the laws or the, the actions of the state. So it's not really an internalized, or if it is internalized, it is through education, through socialization into the Turkish state. But it is a line that is more or less defined by the state and not by individuals. And that line may change in time. At sometimes things, certain aspects of Islamic behavior may be accepted, tolerated as being okay, if you want, and at some times you may have a tighter line when, you know, things are not okay. Many in Turkey argue that the time has come to loosen the line, partly because Islam is no threat to the stability of the state, partly because Turks, especially Turkish farmers, are desperate to join that exclusive Western club, the European Union. To qualify, Turkey must first abandon its repressive ways and its reliance on the military. It must outgrow what Deputy Prime Minister Mesut Yilmaz calls Turkey's national security syndrome. I think, I think uh, that's over. Even the fundamentalists have seen that they will have never a, a future in Turkey. I think the threat is over. Can the military's mind be changed on this matter? Uh, if the threat of terrorism and fundamentalism are over, the mind of military has to change. You're sure? I'm sure. If everything is changed, uh, military cannot remain uh, unchanged. Yet the West's war on terrorism gives renewed strength to the military's arm whatever the government wants. Democracy needs discipline. After the 11th September operation, I do believe that most of the countries have already changed their way of looking to that. So rather than the world lecturing Turkey on human rights, you're saying the world will adopt your priorities? And right now, the security of the people and the society is more important than the human rights. Don't you think so? <laughs> The timing of the international war on terrorism couldn't have been worse for Femi Koru. His hearing hasn't gone well. The case adjourned a month, with the prosecutor pressing for the maximum penalty. He and his supporters sense the hardening of attitude is due to the global climate change towards Islam. This means that uh, the world has become an arena for a global February 28th process, meaning uh, that the rights of uh, individuals have been, uh, can be sacrificed uh, on the altar of uh, this security of the state. If you put security in front of everything, in front of the rights and uh, freedoms of the individual, uh, this is, this can lead uh, the world into an unknown future, actually. And this is my fear. And the frustration of even the most moderate Muslims is growing. Bana baskı o uygulayan bir sistem, baskı uygulayan bir sistem, örneğin denize düşen yılana sarılır hesabıyla Denize düşen bir insan yılana sarıldığı gibi ben de kurtulabilmek için her türlü mücadeleyi veririm. And you, would you fight for your faith? Elbette. İnancım için savaşırım. Turkey's political and military elite mingle comfortably at the opening of parliament. Islamic politicians may attend, though their parties are shunned as coalition partners and regularly banned. Ironically, the most popular politician with the public is the Islamic Tayyip Erdogan, who some years ago was recorded saying this. Gücün yetmez. Millete rağmen bu yürümez zaten. 
Türkiye'mizin aynı şekilde sorunlarını çözmeye geliyor. Ve buna hazırız. Sıçrayarak inşallah bu sıkıntıları aşacağız. Çünkü yürümeye değil sıçramaya ihtiyacımız var. Erdoğan has recanted now and professes loyalty to the secular state. But he's suspected to be foxing, practicing takiye. Takiye is a technical Islamic term that describes the, uh, the right that is given to the Muslim to hide his real feelings when threatened, when in danger. And the assumption is, therefore, that these guys, the Islamic parties, are in fact waiting for the right time to topple the democratic system, impose a shariat, uh, Quranic law-based uh, system, and create a purely theocratic, Taliban-like, or whatever, regime in Turkey. And the assumption, then, is that they're masking their intentions under the guise of democracy and whatever, and that the moment they have power, they will topple the regime. Every Friday, in every Muslim country, the faithful gather to pray. But even here, the Turkish government takes a strong hand. The Imam's weekly sermon is written by the government-appointed spiritual leader. He's allowed to talk up the besieged Turkish lira, but subjects like politics and the war are out of bounds. Camiye gideceksin, namazını kılacaksın, dışarıya gelip hiçbir şeye karışmayacaksın. Yani imam orada, gardiyan, cemaatte mahkum. Sistemin algılamış olduğu, benim algılamış olduğum İslam sistem tarafından bu şekilde uygulanıyor. Be passive, be faithful and be quiet. It's a delicate balance and it costs them many liberties. But the Turkish government has managed to keep its Muslims moderate and the forces of fundamentalism at bay. Now, like the good Western ally it is, Turkey has volunteered to join America's war on terror. For those living on the religious fault line, the rumblings are faint, but they are no longer so distant. <laughs> 